Hello and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to your next lesson on quadratic equations. Our goal, I can solve a quadratic equation by factoring. So we're going to solve by factoring because yesterday we used a graphing calculator. And graphing calculators are kind of big and cumbersome and I know not many of you actually really enjoy them. So instead of using a graphing calculator, and the, a graphing calculator is one of the best ways to solve uh, by graphing because if you don't have a graphing calculator it is not very efficient or very accurate because doing it by hand you can only really get a rough estimate. So we're going to move on to an algebraic method of solving equations and that is by factoring. Yes, factoring, the other F word. If you need to go back and take a look at how to factor, now is a very good time to do it. Um, we need to make sure that we know how to factor. So, but we're going to start with some very simple equation so that we know why factoring is important. This equation, a times b equals 0, is factored. Because remember, factor means to write as a product. And the only thing I have here is a product. I have a times b. Now, what do we know about a and b? Well, I know that when I multiply a times b, I get 0. And I know the only way to multiply to get 0 is if I have a 0 to start with. So one of them has to be 0. Whenever we have two things multiplied together, if one of them is 0, then the whole expression will be 0. So now, how about these brackets? What do I know? Well, since I've got two brackets multiplied together, and when they're multiplied together, they equal 0, that must mean one of the brackets is 0. So let's see, what value of x would make this bracket 0? I hope you can look at it and just figure it out. What do I have to put with a positive 5 to make this thing go to 0? And I hope your answer was negative 5. If I put a negative 5 with that, I get a 0. So x could be negative 5. If x was negative 5, this bracket would be 0, and this bracket would be negative 8. But it doesn't matter what's in that bracket anyway, because 0 times negative 8 gives me 0. So now let's take a look at the second bracket. This bracket could be 0 as well, because whatever is in this bracket, if I multiply it by 0, I'm still going to get 0. So what do I have to put with negative 3 in order to get 0 in that bracket? That's going to be a positive 3. So I have negative 5 and positive 3. Both of those could be values of x that would give this expression, make this expression 0. So as long as we have an expression in factored form, all we need to do is figure out what makes the bracket 0. And this really shouldn't be a question. It's not a question. It's an exclamation point. That's all we have to do is make one bracket 0 or both brackets 0. So here's an example, solving an equation already in factored form. Uh, we've already done one of these, but the one up above was very, very simple. This one's a little bit more complicated because it's not quite as easy just to say, uh, I know what I can stick in for x to make this bracket 0. Um, so if it's not quite that easy, what you could do is actually set it equal to 0. And now it's a linear equation, so I'm going to add 2 to both sides, and I have 3x equals 2, and divide both sides by 3, x equals 2 thirds. Now, this one over here, we can do the same thing. 4x minus 1 equals 0. I'm going to add 1 to both sides, so this side becomes 4x and this side becomes 1, and divide both sides by 4, x equals 1 quarter. So there's my two answers. x is 2 thirds, and then this bracket will be 0. Or x is 1 quarter, and then that makes this bracket 0. Um, so you can do that, or you can recognize the shortcut here. Um, for both of these brackets, the numerator, this 2 and this 1, were the constant terms. See? 2 and 1. So it's actually constant terms over top of, well, where did this 4 and this 3 come from? Well, that 4 and that 3 are from this 3 and this 4, which are coefficients. So constant over coefficients 
and this bracket has a negative, and this bracket has a negative, and both our answers are positive. Well, to get negatives to, to um, we have to change the sign. Okay. To get negatives to change to positives, we change the sign. We put the negative in front of it. So this is the shortcut. You take the constant, you put it over the coefficient, you change the sign. If you don't remember the shortcut, just set them equal to zero and solve the linear equation. Okay. So now, let's have a look. What happens if it's not already in factored form? Well, if it's not already in factored form, you have to factor it. And before you factor it, you must rearrange and make one side equal to zero. Because that's what we have to do. We have to make it equals zero. So factored side has to equal zero because I need two things multiplied together that equal zero. Because that's an easy way to figure out. Zero is easy to find out what multiplies to. So for this question up here, I'm going to rearrange to make one side equal to zero. So then all I have to do is figure out which factor, um, what makes the factor zero. So I am going to rearrange this equation as n squared plus 9n plus 18 equals 0. If you don't know what I did there, I added 18 and I added 9n to both sides, plus 18 plus 9n. Hopefully that's something that I don't really need to go over. Now I'm going to factor this. This is a simple trinomial. Since it's a simple trinomial, it's pretty simple. I'm going to put have n's at the front. This tells me that the signs are both the same. And then I look at this one and it tells me that they are both plus. So I'm going to put two pluses in here. Since the signs are the same, I'm going to read this backwards. I'm multiplying to 18 and adding to 9. Well, what multiplies to 18 and adds to 9? That will be 6 and 3. Now I have it factored, but there is more to this than that. Now I have to figure out what values of n make the bracket 0. Now this one's one of the simple ones. What value of n do I have to put with 6 in order to make that bracket go to 0? Well, that is going to be negative 6. And the other bracket will be negative 3. Now the next bracket that we're dealing with uh, is a little bit more complicated to factor, but not a lot. Um, I'm going to rearrange it to make one side 0. So I do 3k squared, subtract 33k, plus 72. And that's going to equal 0. Now I have to factor this. Now notice it actually has a common factor. I can take 3 out. And when I take 3 out, I have k squared minus 11k plus uh, 24. And that's going to equal 0. Now I have to factor it. I've got my two sets of brackets. I know I have k's at the beginning. This is a simple trinomial as well. This tells me the signs are both the same and then I look at the middle and it tells me they are both negative so I put a negative here and a negative here so I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to 24 and add to 11 and that will be 8 and 3 and again we're not quite done this 3 out front actually has no effect on the answer it's a factor in itself but since it doesn't have a variable with it there's absolutely no way it can be 0 so it can't affect what makes this 0 so this bracket here is 0 if my k value is 8, because 8 minus 8 is 0. And this second bracket will be 0 if my k is 3, because 3 minus 3 is 0. Now, the next one, it looks a little bit more complicated. Negative 2x squared minus x plus 12 equals negative 3x squared plus 6x. I still have to get one side equal to 0. So I'm going to add 3x squared to both sides, which gives me an x squared. I have to subtract 6x from both sides, which gives me subtract 7x on this side, and then plus 12 equals 0. And again, it's a simple trinomial. Bracket, 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 bracket equals 0. I've got x's at the front. I know the signs are the same. And they're both negative. So we have negative, negative. We have to multiply to 12 and add to 7. That would be um, 3 and 4. And what two values? Well, if x is 3 in this bracket, I will get a 0. If x is 4 in that bracket, I will get a 0. So the two values of x that work are 3 
and 4. Now I'm going to do a quick left side, right side check on this one. I'm going to check these questions. On the left side of this equation, I have negative 2x squared minus x plus 12. And I'm going to check that that's going to equal the right side when I sub in these numbers. So I'm going to start with 3. Negative 2, 3 squared minus 3 plus 12 equals negative 2 times 9 minus 3 plus 12, which equals negative 18 minus 3 plus 12. Negative 18 minus 3 is negative 21 plus 12 gives me negative 9. So now the right side, and I'm just going to move that over a little bit, the right side of this equation is negative 3x squared plus 6x. So I'm going to go negative 3x, the one we're checking is 3, squared plus 6 times 3 equals negative 3 times 9 plus 18, which equals negative 27 plus 18, which equals negative 9. So since the left side equals the right side, I know that 3 is correct and I've got the right answer. Now I should actually do this with the 4 as well. Uh, you can check the 4 on your own. Okay, now I'm going to look at the next one. This one has, uh, uh, needs to be rearranged. So we've got 16n squared minus 114n and I'm going to add 14 to both sides. So I get plus 14 equals 0. Now, I know I can take a 2 out, so I'm going to take the 2 out, and I get 8n squared minus 57n plus 7 equals 0. Now, this is a complex trinomial, so we've got a little bit of figuring to do, but luckily that 7 on the end is prime, so I know that on the end I have 7 and 1, so I just have some choices for the beginning. They have to multiply to 8, these two numbers. So I have a choice of 1 and 8 or 2 and 4. Um, the middle number is actually getting kind of close to 7 times 8. So I'm thinking I actually need this to be 7 times 8. And then this would be 1. So 7 times 8 is 56. And 1 times 1 is 1. And we know the signs are the same, so they have to have a sum of 57. Um, so 56 and 1 do have a sum of 57. And I know I need them both to be negative. Okay. So now I have to make those brackets 0. Sometimes people forget that that's what they're doing. I'm just going to write this down again. This is n minus 7, uh, 8n minus 1. And that has to equal 0. People get it factored and then they go, phew, I'm done. But we're not done. We now have to see what makes these brackets 0. Um, well, n could be 7 from the first bracket. Or for the next one, remember we do constant term, which is 1, over the coefficient, which is 8, and then change the sign. So this thing is positive. So those are the two values of n that will make that 0. So now we're going to take a look at this one. Hey, the constant term is missing. What is up with that? This isn't a trinomial. How on earth can I factor it? This is actually incredibly easy. People make it really hard. If the constant term is missing, you simply need to take out a common factor. You will always at least be able to take out the variable. You might be able to take out a coefficient as well, but you'll at least be able to take out the variable. So what looks complicated, I just actually need to take an x out, and then I have 3x plus 19 left in there. And this is factored. We could think of this as having a bracket around it, and I just have to figure out what makes each bracket 0. Well, what makes the first bracket 0 is if I have a 0 for x. And what makes the second bracket 0, remember, constant term over the coefficient, opposite sign. So if the constant term is missing, you should be very, very happy because it's very, very easy. Now, example 4 solve when the middle term is missing. There's actually two ways to do this. I'm going to solve by factoring and then I'm going to solve by isolation. This is the only time you can solve by isolation. I'm going to take the 5 out 
And then we have x squared minus 9 equals 0. And this is the difference of squares. So since that's the difference of squares, it's really straightforward. I do 5, and it's going to be x plus 3, x minus 3. So if the constant term, if the middle term is missing, um, you probably have a difference of squares. And then your answer is plus or minus 3. Because a negative 3 will make this one 0, and a positive 3 will make this one 0. Now we can isolate this one um, by getting the x squared by itself first. This is the only time isolation works, is if we don't have an x term. The only time isolation works for quadratics, if I don't have an x term. So I'm going to add 45 to both sides, and I have 5x squared equals 45. I'm going to divide both sides by 5, and I have x squared equals 9. And then take the square root of both sides, so I have x equals plus or minus 3, which is exactly the same thing as we got before. Now, how about if there's fractions? Ew, fractions. We don't like fractions, but they're not that tough to, dis to deal with. Anytime you have fractions, you can get rid of them by multiplying through by the lowest common denominator of the fractions. So in this case, the lowest common denominator of the fractions is going to be 6. So I multiply everything through by 6. Those 6s cancel, so I just get x squared. 3 goes into 6 twice, and now I multiply, and I get minus 2 times 4x is just minus 8x. And that's going to equal negative 12. Now the fractions are gone. So no biggie. I'm going to add 12 to both sides to get one side equal to 0. x squared minus 8x plus 12 equals 0. Now we factor. This is a simple trinomial, so it's simple. And we have x's at the front. I know the signs are the same, and they're both negative. So I'm going to put two negatives in. Since the signs are the same, we're multiplying to 12 and adding to 8. So what multiplies to 12 and adds to 8? Well, that'll be 6 and 2. And what values make these brackets 0? That'll be 6 and 2. And they're going to be positive because I'm trying to cancel out negatives. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you solve by factoring.